Welcome back to HiSeq Expert Video Tips. This video focuses on tips and troubleshooting guidance related to the mechanical and thermal systems of the HiSeq. It also discusses maintenance for your HiSeq. If you've not already done so, be sure to check out parts one and two of this series for tips on sequencing primers and the instrument computer. The temperature for the SPS chemistry on the high seek is controlled in two locations. The chiller, which keeps the reagents cold, and the peltiers found beneath the flow cells, which heat and cool the flow cells as needed during the SPS chemistry. Let's first take a look at the chiller. The chiller compartment has room for racks of reagents for flow cell A, flow cell B, and a single rack for paired in reagents for both flow cell positions. Each position has a handle that lowers sippers into the reagent bottles held in the rack. Because it is approximately 4 degrees Celsius in the chiller, there is a reservoir in the back for the condensation to collect. The collected liquid is pumped out to waste via the condensation pump. You will hear a clicking sound daily coming from your high seat. That's the condensation pump. It drains the liquid from the reservoir in the back of the chiller to waste. The condensation pump waste line is the one that is thicker than all the other lines. It is best practice to ensure that the chiller is clean of any condensation or spilled liquid before each run. A quick wipe down can help keep the condensation pump in good working order. When loading reagents into the chiller, make sure to get down to eye level with the reagent rack and monitor the sippers going into the tubes. It is possible for the plastic sipper to get bent and potentially miss the opening of the bottle. This results in pulling air into the lines and run failure due to lack of reagent delivery. While the instrument is running, make sure to monitor the chiller temperature. There is no high temperature warning message, so contact your Illumina support team if you see the chiller temperature rise above 7 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time. The temperature will spike when the door is open but it should quickly return to expected temperature range of between 4 and 7 degrees Celsius. The other thermal systems are the Peltiers, which are located underneath the flow cell stages. As the Peltiers cycle through a range of temperatures, the temperature profile is visible during the run on the temperature chart and also recorded in a temperature log file. The temperature log file can be found here. Now let's take a look at the flow cell stage. This metal surface is heated and cooled during the sequencing run as required by the SPS chemistry. It is important to clean the stage before each run with ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. Be sure to use a non-abrasive wipe as the Peltier plates are optically flat and must not be chipped or damaged. Also, inspect the ridges around the flow cell and the vacuum holes to ensure that they are free of any debris. Any debris in the ridges or vacuum holes can prevent the flow cell from being firmly held to the stage for the entire sequencing process. Now that the flow cell stage is clean, you're ready to load your flow cell. Follow the standard cleaning procedure with water and ethanol. Also, verify that there is no debris or adhesive substance on the flow cell itself that can transfer to the stage and prevent the flow cell from sitting flat. When loading a flow cell onto the high seek, make sure to register the flow cell against the guide pins in the back right of the flow cell holder. Visually make sure that the inlets and outlets of the flow cell are positioned above the inlet and outlet gasket opening. Some minor position adjustments may be made to the flow cell to ensure proper alignment with the gaskets and proper flow. Move the switch position from 0 to 1 to begin pulling the vacuum. When the light is flashing green, make sure to move the switch slowly from position 1 to 2. This moves the inlet and outlet manifolds up to press against the vacuum held flow cell. Flipping the switch too quickly can jar the flow cell and create a poor seal. Now let's go to Tim for some maintenance tips and instrument best practices. Thanks, Chad. Let's highlight a few best practices that will keep your high seek instrument in excellent working order. After a sequencing run, but before maintenance washing, 
Illumina protocols instruct the user to replace the disposable black gaskets. This allows the new gaskets to condition during the repeated pumping of the upcoming maintenance wash, which allows them to form a better seal with the next sequencing flow cell when it is loaded. Because the HiSeq is a fluidics-based instrument, it is vital that routine water and maintenance washing is performed. When performing any wash, it's important to separate out the waste lines for accurate collection of waste volumes. Measuring the wash waste volume of individual lines can be crucial data in identifying lane-specific fluidics problems or general flow issues. The actual collected waste volume should be within 10% of the expected volumes. If in doubt, contact your local service and support team or technical support. To illustrate this point, on the right are eight tubes that captured the waste from a water wash on side A. One tube, which was collecting waste from lane number three, is significantly lower than the other seven tubes and would clearly indicate poor flow. If all the waste lines were put into two large tubes, in this example we may get 31.9 milliliters in one tube and 34.6 milliliters in the other, for a total waste volume of 66.5 milliliters. This is within 10% of the expected 72 milliliters and very close to the total waste collected from a separate successful wash on side B, as seen in this data table. However, a run should not be started on side A until the flow in lane 3 is resolved. In this way, flow issues can be missed when only measuring the total waste volume. So, always be sure to separate out individual waste lines to measure waste volume. Here are the expected volumes for water and maintenance washes. Be sure to follow the guidelines for washing your HiSeq instrument as listed in your appropriate user guide. Simply put, for better long-term performance and uptime, be sure to wash your HiSeq routinely. We also recommend labeling the water or wash bottles and tubes by their numbered position in the rack. This prevents any cross-contamination between reagent positions. This concludes our segment on the mechanical systems, thermal systems, and maintenance for the HiSeq. Our next segment in the HiSeq video series will cover the tips and tricks for the fluidic system. We'll see you in part four.